Hey guys, talking about grubs. Because it's still fairly warm, we've still got 16 degrees in the day. Um, it's still a good temperature for grubs to become present. Now we're at this property here. It's actually one of our subscribers' properties. He's seen the channel, he's got in touch, and we've started applying treatments. We haven't done anything like scarifying, seeding, dressing, or anything like that. So we've just been putting fertilizer on and weed killer. And like most lawns at the moment, there is some browning due to humidity. And that humidity is because we've got thatch in the lawn, okay, that builds up. And with that thatch, when we get rain, it holds onto water. And when we get the heat, it becomes humid, like athlete's foot between your toes, okay? It's the perfect breeding ground for fungus and other things. So that's why we've got some of the browning in the lawns. It's due to fungal activity. Now also, we can confirm that with the presence of mushrooms. Okay, we're starting to see a fairy ring there. What you want to do with those is get your fork and fork those areas. And you can put turf salve on on a regular basis or a bit of washing up liquid in some warm water and pour it over the ring. Eventually, it will start to subside. Hey guys, if you've got a second, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel to get more great content like this and to help get the word out about how I help you to improve your lawn. It's very strange, but over 80% of you guys are not even subscribed to the channel. So please do me a favour, smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let's crack on. Now the reason I'm here is this section. This section looks a little different from the normal brown sections, okay? We've still got plenty of grass in there. But you can start to tell that we're starting to see some larger areas where it does appear to be dying off. That one's a square shape, which is a bit odd. I haven't looked at that yet, but I've started to have a look in a couple of areas. Can you guess? We've got some grubs. So while it's perfectly fine for a lawn to have some grubs and it can tolerate a few grubs, don't worry too much. You should be conducting a pull test on a regular basis. So in general, they will start in an area, they will eat to the roots and then they start to spread out to the sides. So if you want to look for some, you look in an area of green, just on the side of any brown areas. And if you can pull it out like a piece of carpet or it pulls easily, then you've definitely got an issue with grubs. If not, the grass will remain firm, and that means the grass is healthy, it's pushing nice deep roots down. So let's have a look. We'll start here, and that's pretty firm. So it's not too bad. And then we come somewhere here, and there's a bit more movement there on the roots. It's lifting up a bit, but there is some strength there. Here, definitely similar thing. Here, again, it's lifting up just a little bit. And when it's really bad, you can just lift it right off. So here, okay, it's got a little bit of movement. What we're gonna do, I'm just pulling a section up but I'm putting my fingers under to try and keep it largely intact you could do this with a spade now that one's not too bad there's quite a lot of earthworms there so I'm going to put that one back We'll come to another area at the side of a dead spot. I went straight away. Let me show you this. So straight away, we peel it back and we can see a chafer grub. And there we go. That's your typical chafer grub. It's got the orange head and a curved body that is creamy white and it's in the shape of a C, the letter C. And if you just touch them, 
you'll sometimes see the legs moving or they're kind of wriggling about so you know that they're still alive and they're still here because of the warm temperatures okay, I'm just going to put that on the path but they are what are eating the roots now it's not too bad but look again there's another one and that's not doing too much again it's getting chucked away and here again there's a third one Now they are coming to the end of their cycle because normally they start out as a May beetle which flies around in May-ish roughly give or take and it will go and mate in nearby bushes. So we're just going to carefully put that back because with plenty of water this grass will start to push new roots back down so it is still saveable okay yeah, there's a lot of worm casts around at the moment okay the worms are eating the soil they digest the soil take the nutrients out and this is basically what comes out of them when they finish doing their bit but this is really good stuff so worm casts or vermicular soil is actually the casts and what they're doing is they're digesting the soil and as they digest the organic matter that's within the soil the matter is then excreted out as these casts and you can actually use this and mix it into good soil so it's good if you want to collect these put them into a bag and reuse them into soil so we've got normal soil there and then you can just see how it starts to go thinner and browner that indicates something is wrong so we have a look down here We'll just have a little look just to rule things out. See, it's almost a perfect square, which is more man made, and you can see the grass is laid flat. So, something's been on top of that, but we'll just have a little tug. That is quite loose, and that is quite loose, but it's not the worst. Wow, look at that. Oh wow, yes, so we have chafer damage, we have a chafer here, so again that's going on the path for the birds, so it's always worth looking, even if it looks man-made, this was obviously a hot spot at one point and then they've moved out to the sides. So the question is, what do we do about it? What do we do? How can we stop them? How can we get rid of them? How can we deal with it? How can we keep a nice green lawn? Well, they say prevention is better than cure. And there's things that you can do, but there's no foolproof way of stopping them from getting into your lawn in the first place. May, roughly, is the time we have little copper coloured backs and they fly around and it's usually one to two weeks that you see them flying around so you have to be on the ball and keeping an eye on what's happening in May approximately sometimes it's earlier sometimes it's later sometimes it's longer than two weeks that you see them around so they will fly around if you see them flying around you can stamp on them so less are getting into the lawn you can use a trap which is they're often yellow but it's uh, it's something what you hang from a tree because trees are where they go to mate you hang it from a tree and it's got a pheromone in which attracts them to it and once they're in they can't get out um, so that's one option whether they are that effective I don't know that they're really effective they will get some but the problem is that they can also attract bees and we don't want to be trapping bees so that is something I've heard quite a lot now one other thing you could think about doing around May time 
if you time it just right and you time it with a renovation you may well have used a fleece on your lawn now that fleece is there to stop birds from pecking at the grass and getting the grass seed but it will also should stop the the beetles from getting into the grass and laying their eggs into the ground so around the time you see them flying why not put a fleece on your lawn and keep that fleece on for a few weeks just take it off when you want to mow and then replace it obviously if you've got a great big lawn then you're not going to do that now let's say you've missed that you've missed that window then what do you do so they've gone in they've laid the eggs it's usually about two weeks after that the eggs start to hatch this is where you can put other things on and do things to try and kill them or get them out of the grass before any major damage is done so your first option is nematodes nematodes are microscopic organisms okay and it's best if you aerate and scarify because they're so small they've got to get down through all that thatch and any compacted soil and then they've got to swim around in the soil find the grubs and they enter through an opening release a poison that stops them from feeding the downside is you do have to scarify an aerate for best results and you have to do it within two weeks of receiving them because they are a breathing living organism and you have to keep your lawn watered every single day without fail for two weeks but based on that if you can do that they are effective and low cost but you've got to get them on now one other thing you could do is use a black tarpaulin sheet or a piece of carpet now a few of you will know about this so late at night soak your grass in the effective area soak it then immediately put a piece of carpet or black tarpaulin over that area okay put some bricks down to stop it from blowing up and coming off the grass and then first thing in the morning as soon as it starts to get light whip it off and look with any luck they will have come to the surface okay now you can either pick them off brush them off blow them off whatever you want to do but you can get them off that way you've pulled them out of the ground in effect one other thing you can try is my emerald green now i'm not making a claim that it works in this manner but i had a customer last year who put it on about the time they were active and the next morning she came and or well, she phoned me and said that they've all come out the grass and they're clinging to the tops of the blades of the grass i don't want you to do this on the expectation but that was just an experience that i received that a customer told me there could have been other reasons for it but it, on that occasion they were coming out of the ground then there are products like turf solve which you can put on which if you put it on and then again after three days and then once a month it does help to get them under control and keep the numbers down again that is fairly inexpensive and it's worth considering and worth trying now finally there is a commercial product a commercial pesticide now available but only to licensed companies who have all the correct qualifications to get hold of this product otherwise you just physically cannot get hold of any and that is what I'm going to do on this lawn. I've got the product, I'm going to apply it, and that's it. Once it's on, it's got a very good kill rate. If you can't, um, if you're struggling, you can always ask a company who has the product to come and apply it as a one-off. Whether they do or don't is another question. They may try and ask you to join their company um, under a contract and take on at least six treatments or feed and weed as well but whether you want to go down that route is entirely up to you but they may also try and get you to have it aerated it's not necessary to have it aerated before you put this product on but it does help it is beneficial but once it's on it will make its way down okay the product we use is called a cellophane but I'm not going to give you any instructions on how to use this or apply it because it, it's really strictly monitored how this is used and who can use it unfortunately domestic users cannot get a hold of this so I'm going to be just covering up while I'm mixing and applying
Okay, so I'm just mixing up according to the instructions. We have to put the correct dosage in and we use these little needles here to inject the right amount into the mix. It's actually easier just taking it out of the bottle. Thought I'd try it in the lid, but it's easier out of the bottle. So I'm going to come back, mix it up, and we'll get this applied. So we've got the correct amount of product for the size that we're applying it to. And it's just focusing on this one area and it's important you get all of that amount of product down because you've calculated that amount of product for that size lawn. So it doesn't matter how much water you put in as long as you put enough in to give the minimum amount but I usually put extra water in and then I can go over it several times which you can see. Right that's it so that's been sprayed on now and that will just gradually work its way down uh, with any bit of rain we get it'll just work its way down into the soil profile and it's got a pretty quick kill rate so i just want to say thank you to alan for letting me film on your lawn we are coming back here in spring for a renovation on the small front lawn the larger front lawn is having some work done so we're going to leave that for a little while but the small front lawn we're going to do a renovation we're going to bring some topsoil in this is next spring and we're going to get it leveled up and looking a whole lot nicer so if you've got any questions or comments please leave them down below we'll see you on the next video when you take a look at me you only see what you want